On today's show, going to be looking at the potential avenues for the LA Clippers next season. Are they going to run it back? Are they going to blow it up? Are they going to retool? What are the pros and cons to each option? Going to be talking about it all on today's Locked On Cancun Clippers. You are Locked On Clippers, your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, sir. You are locking in with the Clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day, your team every day. I'm your host, Darian Viziri, born and raised in L.A. and just finished my 19th season as a Clipper fan. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod and subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, where... I still post all sorts of NBA and LA sports content and locked on Clippers is free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Let us know what you think. What, what's the option that you want? Do you want to run it back? Do you want to retool? Do you want to blow it up? Just let us know what you would prefer. And before we get started, today's episode is brought to you by prize picks. Prize picks is the best daily fantasy sports platform in North America. All you got to do is download the app today and use code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. All right, so for this episode, I did promise that we're going to be rolling in some guests over this summer and making his Locked On Clippers debut is a diehard Clips fan. We sometimes sneak him into Section 207. He's frequently in Twitter spaces, but he's been a Clipper fan for a very long time, and he's one of the most familiar Clipper fans with the cap. And he's very well-versed in the in the off-season talk, so I decided let's bring him on the show. Let's see what he's got to say. He's got the same name as me. How about that? Darian, also known as Drift. Welcome to the show, bro. Uh, Thanks for having me. Um, Looking forward to talking about uh, the ins and outs of the team, um, the different routes that we can go. And, uh, you know, hopefully we could come to a a conclusion where we're both optimistic about the future. Yeah, well, before we do that, let's just ask, you know, it is always something special when I get to actually have a Clipper fan on the show. So let me just ask you, man, it's been – by the time this episode airs, it's been a week since we've been eliminated. How are you feeling about the whole season? I know before the season, you were pretty adamant on team. Let's not trade for Harden. Let's trade for more size, which a lot of the locked on commenters were on that side as well. So now, like, let me just hear from you, you know, how you feel the season ended. And, you know, we, you went to so many games this year, a good, decent chunk, and are, are one of the most into it fans, no pun intended, of like any Clipper fan that I know. So give me your thoughts on the season. Um, it's a bit bittersweet. I mean, it's it's uh, a bit of the you know familiar feelings that we've been feeling the last you know what four years. Um, you know, a lot of really high highs, very low lows, and you know a reminder of the uncertainty of you know the health of this team when it comes to the playoffs. Um, I wouldn't say that I didn't expect this to happen, but I mean, we kind of saw the you know the writing on the wall, especially with. Kawhi Leonard and even Harden getting hurt later in the season, we kind of saw them kind of hobbling into the playoffs. So I wasn't really optimistic, but uh, um, you know things can happen. You think teams can get hot going into the playoffs. So um, I was still going to rock out with the team regardless, and um, you know just live with the results. Yeah. So let's talk about the most likely result for the Clippers, and and that is to bring this team back. So, obviously, Kawhi Leonard was re-signed in the middle of the season. Let's begin with Kawhi because he's obviously the most important piece. He's the centerpiece of this era, and sadly, we've not really reaped the benefits in any way of Kawhi Leonard's postseason mastery in the past. Besides 2021, first round against Dallas and the two games that we won against Utah. Uh, Let me ask you, what did you think of when the Clippers re-signed Kawhi, and how do you think it's helping or hurting them right now as we approach free agency? I I think it helps in, in, in a different um, – in multiple ways, actually. I think one of the key things that um, a lot that kind of goes over a lot of people's heads is that they got him at a discount. I think they shaved about maybe 10, uh, 10 million off of his max contract per year, um, which was very crucial given that, you know, they are second apron team and shaving down some um, salary to, you know, get some flexibility was definitely – very important. Um, and then also, let's say, for example, they decide to, to tear it down. Um, having them at a reduced rate can possibly work in their benefit when it comes to possible trades in the future. 
Okay, so let me ask you that right away. I mean, do you think that the Clippers have any intentions of trading Kawhi? Because the thing is, why is it so for fans that are saying, you know, how could you run it back, this and that? Like, what are your feelings about running it back? Do you want to if you had a choice? Like, clearly this team fell short and and putting our stock in a Kawhi Leonard health in the playoffs is extremely risky. But is is it a risk that you see worth taking? And then after you give your opinion, like, why is he, why do you think it's so likely? Because we, we put this as the first option because we know this is most likely what is coming, much to a lot of fans. Uh, right. I, I think running it back is kind of kind of like the main choice they really have at this point, honestly, um, given the limitations um, they have to even rebuild. It's not like they can tank. They don't have any picks. Um, and even if they were to – bring back picks via trade, it's likely that a lot of these picks will be later in the draft. So just kind of factoring in that in, them going into a new arena, I, I don't think that they'll likely want to go into a new arena in a rebuilding situation. Um, and then thirdly, just kind of factoring in when the Harden trade did happen, they didn't have a full summer to really build around their main stars. It happened in the middle of the season. And with that happening, they had very much so limited flexibility to add the needed um, role players to, you know, I guess, um, sorry. Compliment, <laughs> compliment the support. Compliment, compliment pretty the pretty much complimentary, yeah. Complimentary yeah. role players to, to work with, you know, or to cover the weaknesses of their stars. So, okay. So let's say we, Kawhi Leonard is back. He's already on contract. He's coming back next season. Then we have the two, you know, question marks. And that is Paul George who can opt into the final year of his contract. And that would guarantee him basically $49 million, which is a lot of money. We don't know if he's going to get that per year from another team or from the Clippers. But if the Philadelphia 76ers want to throw a max contract at him, do you see the Clippers responding? Because we can, we can offer him the most money. Because you have right. the bird rights. But do you think one, do you think it's in the Clippers' best interest to max out Paul George? And two, do you think Paul's gonna want a max only? I, I think Paul is gonna leverage whatever he can to get the most money. I mean, this is his last contract, last big contract of his career. And he's doing like any free agent, he's gonna leverage the other the interest from other teams to get the most money as possible. Um, just kind of looking at the writing on the wall, I would think. The Clippers would try to pay him a similar contract to what Kawhi has. Um, you know, I've read a few things. I think maybe PG wanted a four-year deal versus a three-year deal, and that maybe be where they're at a crossroads. Um, personally, I think what a solution that they could do is essentially guarantee three and then partially guarantee the fourth. That might be some middle ground. That way, you know, you could still have uh, – that contract won't be so, I guess, uh, bad on the market, essentially – where it's a four-year guarantee, it's more so a three partial. So, do you think we should sign him to a max? You, because I mean, from what it sounds like, you definitely. It sounds like you don't think we should. I I think I think they should essentially because I mean, if they let him walk, then they pretty much let him walk for nothing, right? And given that they don't have the tools to rebuild, um, you're essentially you know hoping that you can replace him via free agency, and given that the Clippers will still be over luxury tax. They, the only thing that will open up is essentially their mid-level exception. So would you be hoping that you replace his talent via mid-level exception? I, I simply doubt it. And then if you add on, let's say, an extension for Harden, they're still going to be creeping up on that second threshold again as well. So, I mean, do you, how much backlash do you think there's going to be, though, if the Clippers make Paul George their highest paid player again? I mean, I mean he was – tied for the highest paid with Kawhi, but he would essentially be making more than Kawhi. How much backlash do you think they're going to receive for that? I think they're going to get a lot of backlash, but I mean, this team before has signed a player that, you know, most people didn't think that they should have. I mean, we saw it with Blake Griffin, um, his injury history, and they maxed him out and people didn't think his contract was movable. And in the middle of the season, they found a deal to, um, help them to the best retool. So uh, honestly, I think what the Clippers are going to do is try to re-sign everybody, assess the team um, as next year goes by, 
And then from there, kind of explore all options. I believe last summer they already tried to explore some options with Paul George. And um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they do the same thing again this year. So, yeah, essentially bring it back and then try to get better role players uh, around the margins. Uh, mm-hmm. Coming up, we're going to be talking about how the Clippers can do that and what role players we probably want to see moved or replaced. And then we're also going to be talking about James Harden's contract situation, as well as what blowing it up could look like and why it is so unlikely. Going to be talking about that coming up. I got to tell you a little something about prize picks. Prize picks is the best daily fantasy sports platform in North America. And here's how it works. All you got to do is just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. So it could be, for example, Minnesota versus Denver. You could take the more on Jokic points, rebounds, assists combined, or you can take less stuff as simple as that. And you can now win up to a hundred times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000 with basketball, hockey, and college basketball entries today on prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Download the app today and use code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Just download the app today and use code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Prize picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. I got to tell you a little something about eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. All right, so back here with my guy, Darian Downing, also known as Drift on Twitter. So let's talk about James Harden. So we go for James Harden. He helps us have our best stretch of the season. You know, I think if you look at the best stretch of the Clippers season and the worst stretch of the Clippers season, they can almost be defined by the way James Harden's playing. You know, when he dropped off, we dropped off. When he was thriving, Clippers were thriving. So given that we traded an unprotected 2028 first round pick, bunch of expiring contracts, and then I think another pick swap, do are the Clippers forced essentially, you think, to re-sign James Harden? And what kind of deal do you think he would be looking for? And what's smartest for us? I, I think they are forced to keep him. Um, I mean, I don't think they can really bank on Bones Highland carrying their future going forward. Uh, now, uh, I will say, let's say you want to rebuild and pursue a guard via free agency two years from down the line. That might be a possibility, but just kind of factoring in all that they gave up for them, I guess pick wise, I think they're kind of stuck with them. Um, In regards to the type of deal he's looking for, um, I would think that he would either want the same amount he's making now, but for a period at least three years or a slight increase. So, okay, let's say now you bring back Paul George. Let's say you sign Paul George to a max. By the way, last question about Paul George. Do you think there's any chance that he signs for less than the max? I think it's a possibility. Um, You know, he is comfortable at home. You know, he did, you know, ask to come here. So, I mean, there's – Yeah, so you have to factor that in as well that does he want to leave? Um, I think what the, what the Clippers are trying to figure out right now is how to how to create flexibility while maintaining and satisfying their stars. And I think that's where the negotiations are kind of going back and forth at the moment. And we saw that with Kawhi Leonard, where he had a slight pay cut and he kind of set the tone. So I, I think with him setting the tone, it set the tone for Paul George. 
And right now he's just utilizing his leverage um, and kind of just trying to figure out the most he can get out of um, the Clippers. And as far as James Harden, you think he's going to want the max too? Because this obviously has been an ongoing thing. The Nets didn't want to pay him. The Sixers didn't want to pay him. And it, it's largely because of the reason that a lot of Clipper fans are saying, why should we pay him when he's clearly getting older? He's clearly aging. You know, what do you think about that? You think he's going to want a max? Um, he might want the max, but I think in regards to Harden, um, the market kind of doesn't work in his favor. He doesn't have much leverage compared to Paul George. Um, even in the trade market, I mean, it wasn't many teams that were really vying for him. It was like um, nobody vying for him. Exactly. So with that said, um, I think Clippers have a little bit more negotiating power when it comes to that, given that there aren't many options for him. And it's just really looking at the market, the teams that would have – salary cap aren't really teams that would probably be looking for services so um i don't i don't really expect him to get a max he might get um around the same amount maybe five mil bump perhaps i don't really expect him to get a max at all i feel you i i, I don't either and i hope he doesn't ask for that so yeah. let's say the clippers do bring back He's paul jordan james Harden on new contracts and um what do you how do the how do the Clippers improve the rest of this team? Because if you just bring back this team, you know that it is not a championship team. How do we run this back and improve this roster around the margins? When you look at the salary situation, Norman Powell is guaranteed nineteen million dollars next year. I personally think Norman Powell is probably the most seamless. I don't know fit around these stars. What do you think about his place on the team, uh, Norm? And then you also have Terrence Mann. Who signed for eleven million next year? If it's a Zubats who signed for basically twelve million next year, that's an that's one of the best contracts in the league, honestly, to me. Yeah. To have only Zub for twelve million, and then Amir Coffey for four million—that's nothing. Uh, Kobe Brown two million, Bones Highland four million, and then PJ Tucker has an eleven million dollar player option. I, I, I'm pretty sure he's already opted into that, right? Yes, I believe yeah. so. So okay, so how do we improve the role players? You know, I, we won't. If we re-sign James Harden and Paul George, will we have enough for the taxpayer mid-level exception, or we won't? Um, we won't. Um, yeah, we'll be over the second apron, right? We'll be over the second apron. Um, if I'm not mistaken, as, um, as I was looking, this is a rough estimate. Um, let's say you re-sign Paul George at the same rate as uh, Kawhi Leonard, and let's say you let Rush go, and then you re-sign Harden at the same rate. That will put you about 206 in regards to like the salary cap, that will put us about 16 to 70 million over the apron. What you can possibly do and um, is utilize Norman Powell's contract to get under that apron, and that can open up your mid level exception. So that might so be a possibility. So you're saying trade him. So essentially, what you're saying is we don't really have any room to sign a good free agent if we bring back the big three. We're going to have to trade our role players to get better role players that might fit our stars better. Yeah, they're going to have to trim the fat. Um, I, I I know that uh, the new CBA rules, they go into effect as the 2024-25 season um, calendar, you know, crosses over. I believe that's July 1st. So Something they like might that. so they might have a little bit of flexibility during the draft. But going into July 1st, those those that flexibility is very limited. From there, at that point, you only have – minimum contracts to offer free agents and in regards to trades they can only trade down and then on top of that one of the limitations of the second second apron um rules is that you cannot consolidate multiple contracts to get a higher paying play higher paid player so that's going to limit them significantly especially if they wanted to get someone that's in around around that 25 mil range because they can't essentially combine let's say a norman powell and a P.J. Tucker and go after a, a Jeremy Grant. And that's just being optimistic. We don't really have picks to really offer for Jeremy Grant. But hypothetically speaking, someone in that pay range, they wouldn't be able to go for them because they can't combine their contracts. So let's look at what the Clippers would probably want to improve. I would assume backup center and then another big wing. Yes. To potentially start and move Kawhi Leonard back to the three, maybe move uh, Terrence Mann back to the bench. I mean, who do you think the Clippers could potentially go for? Obviously, we have all summer to think about these kinds of names, but who could be a potential guy? Because 
You know, we're talking about trading our role players and getting an upgrade. Um, honestly, I would I would look at players that are younger players that are on cheaper deals that are due for extensions that are unrestricted free agents. So um example can be possibly um what was it Jalen Smith on the Pacers? Okay. But is he a uh, starting strength. quality player? You know what I mean for a championship contending team, or is he a guy that we can we should bring off the bench? I feel like Jalen Smith is more like a big than a than a wing. Yeah, He's, yeah. But um, I mean, me personally speaking, I think that they should replace um, Jason Plumley. Um, I think. Oh, you're talking, some... oh, you're talking about Jalen Smith as a backup center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 100 percent. I, I I'm with you on that. I think meant as the as the starting four. Oh, as a starting four. Um, it's, it's going to be rough. It's, it's not many yeah. options out there. Um, most of the options that I would personally want, they make too much money. I don't, I don't think they can afford, uh, to trade for John Collins. That will keep them over the second op- apron. Kyle Kuzma would be ideal. That, that's my personal pick, but he makes about what? 26 to 27 million. Jeremy Grant makes about 26, 27 million. Um, I guess, uh, you could possibly look at more so longer wings, um, perhaps Grant Williams, just kind of looking at that Hornet situation. Um, they're supposed to be re- possibly re-signing Miles Bridges. Perhaps they might not want to have so much money invested in Fords. So that might be a possibility there. And given that they are um, lacking shooting, given that they had traded Rozier, so perhaps a pow for, um, grant deal could possibly be a thing where they can shed down on salary as well as uh, add another wing to the roster to do a little bit of the dirty work. But don't you think that'd be a real downgrade getting Grant Williams and losing Norm Powell? I mean, what kind of scoring punch are we going to have off the bench there? Um, as someone that's um, been an advocate of the team getting younger and um, I, I am very much so a Bones Highlands um, fan, I think this will be a, a great opportunity to, let him kind of fill in that role as a scoring punch off the bench. And he's had very much so a lot of spurts throughout the um, last couple of years. It's just that he hasn't had a consistent, um, yeah. consistent role. So what about, so what's happened to Westbrook here? Cause he has a player option. He can opt into for $4 million. Do you think teams will go after Russ? Cause at this point, Russ sounds like he wants to start or he's going to be unhappy. I, I think Russ is going to explore his options and, um, given how this season ended, I'm not sure if the Clippers will necessarily bring him back. Um, you know, I've been proven wrong before, so I mean, I'm not really sure what they'll do when, in regards to that. Um, honestly, I think what they kind of had in mind was that they were going to have him sign for another year and kind of take on that Reggie Jackson type of deal where he plays two years and, and signs for uh, early birds deal. But I don't really think that's on the table. Um, going forward. Yeah. So coming up, we're going to be looking at the options of, we didn't get into it in this segment, but the moral of the story I think is that our options, even if we run it back are kind of bleak to, to improve the supporting cast. Someone good is going to have to go. So the options overall are just not looking too strong for the Clippers, given how financially capped they'll probably be bringing these three back, but coming up, going to look at the two options that would involve some big changes retooling, meaning keeping some stars and losing some others, and, of course, blowing it up. Going to be talking about those options coming up. I got to tell you a little something about Monopoly Go. The best board game in history can now be played on the go. Game off. We got to pause you to talk more about it. I know what you're saying. Flag on the play. You already talked about that, but there's just so much good stuff in this game. In Monopoly Go, you can team up with friends for time tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock. And there's so much to get. You can get unique stickers that you can trade with friends to complete albums for big prizes. You can get cool new playing pieces to travel the boards with or hilarious emojis for taunting friends when you smash their buildings or heist their vaults. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique mini games like Digging for Treasure or a Robot Pachinko Machine. And there's always new timed events that help you win big, like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So get off the bench and go download it now, free on the Google Play or App Store. Game on. 
All right. Time to talk a little bit about the major change options. Let's start with retooling. So what do you think the most likely scenario is for the Clippers retooling? Do you think it involves Kawhi getting traded? Do you think it involves just letting Paul George walk and then trying to use a you know mid-level exception to fill that contract after re-signing James Harden? Or do you think there's a possibility that they let both Harden and Paul George go? In regards to retooling, I think their plan will be to re-sign Paul George and then try to flip him for a better fit next to Kawhi Leonard and Harden. So you try to give him a chance in the season to ball out and raise his value, or do you just trade him before the season yeah, starts? I, I would do that. Um, I, I think that that would probably be the most ideal situation if you're talking about retooling, um, perhaps getting bigger as, as a team. Um, I think this is a very slow team, and I think – Size is very crucial when you're talking about a team that plays slow and a half court team. You're going to want as many possessions as possible. So, I, I, I honestly, I think them trying to raise his value and flipping him would probably be the ideal situation when it comes to retooling. We're trying to we're thinking a little Blake Griffin action to say like, oh, we're yeah. going to give you big money and then just bamboozle him. I mean, it, I wouldn't put past the Clippers. I mean, they've done it before, um, and for all we know, they have a, a bigger plan. Um, long term, um, especially with uh, no picks involved, like I, I gotta imagine that they have some type of plan involved. Okay, so you're saying the most likely scenario of retooling is that they re-sign Paul George and then trade him. Do you think there's any chance to the way you're you're talking? It sounds like you don't think there's any scenario where the Clippers just let him walk. No, I I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> I, I don't I don't see that happening. I don't think it's necessarily that they're gonna let him walk. I think that. Uh, the market might just price them out. Um, I mean, just looking from the different reports I've seen online, whether it be articles, um, it seems like the Clippers do, don't necessarily want to pay the max. And they, and Paul George might be trying to force his, their hand. So well, it's just kind of, huh? I was going to say, well, the thing is, you say price them out, but the thing is, if the Clippers really do want to bring him back and don't want to lose him for nothing, then you just have to pay him that max, right? Yeah. So we do have a choice. Yeah, very, very much so. Um, I, honestly, we I guess we have to kind of see how serious they are about keeping them or not. Um, we, we don't really know until it happens, honestly. Right. And as far as James Harden, do you think there's any chance you talk about us getting younger? That the Clippers are just like, you know what? We tried Harden. Uh, we want to get younger, go a different direction. Or do you think there's just no way? Especially because he played pretty decently in the playoffs. I, I don't think they're going to let Harden go. Uh, me, personally speaking, if I were in their shoes, I would probably try to sign him to one of those – a deal similar to to Chris Paul, right? Where the first couple of years guaranteed partial um, the last year or so. That way they'll have flexibility so that they can, you know, pivot should they need to given his age. You know, the team isn't really young anymore. I think Harden is, what, 35 years old. Paul George is right behind him at 34 and, and Kawhi is 33. So having that flexibility on the back end of those deals, if they can – you know, forming those contracts that way, then I think that would probably be the more, most ideal situation. And it would make their contracts um, more attractive in trade should they decide to flip them at a later date. You think there's any chance the Clippers try to retool by getting rid of Kawhi and saying, look, he's not he the one that's available at the end of the season and we want to sell tickets. Might as well keep the ones that are uh, more guaranteed to stay healthy. Uh, yeah, I could see that. I mean, we saw with Blake Griffin, I think if anybody can get them the most assets back, it probably would be Kawhi Leonard. He's the youngest out of the three. And the he best. Has, he's the best out of the three. And his contract is the most favorable out of the three as well. So um, there would be plenty of teams that would um, line up for him. I think that the biggest question is, is what return would you get for him? Right. Because everybody's scared of his health. That's the thing right. about Kawhi. Is it a risk worth taking for some of these teams? All right, let's talk about the last scenario, blowing it up. I know a lot of Clipper fans, including myself, are you know ready to start rooting for a new era. But as we've talked about, and let's just, let's just tell the people how dire the situation is. This upcoming draft, we do not have our first round pick. That is going to OKC. But this year is not a big deal. It should be like the, I think it's like the 26th pick in the draft. So right. that's not a big deal that we're losing that pick. Of course, we would like to have that. A first round pick is always great, but it's not the end of the world that we've lost that considering our team. Mm -hmm. Now, second round, we actually have two picks this year. We're getting from either Toronto, Indiana, 
Cleveland or Utah. So we're going to get two picks in the second round. I mean, I'm not sure if we're going to draft the next Draymond Green or Nikola Jokic there, but, uh, you know, we're hoping for the best there. Maybe we can get somebody that can contribute in some way, shape, or form. 2025, OKC has our pick. 2025, we do not have a second round pick either. The Lakers have it. 2026, we do not have our first round pick either. Either OKC or Philadelphia will get it. We don't have our second pick either because that was what we traded away for uh, Eric Gordon. And then 2027, we also don't have our first round pick. OKC has that as well. 2027, we do not have our second round pick. That is what we use to trade for Rajon Rondo, if I'm not mistaken. And then 2028, we do not have our first round pick. That has been traded to Philadelphia for James Harden. So we don't have a first round pick till I believe 2029, the Sixers have a pick swap. Um, yeah, or no, we could, we could get our 2027 pick. I believe it's a pick swap though. So didn't, yeah. didn't they do, didn't they add a protection on one of those picks that they sipped out to the uh, Sixers? If I'm not mistaken, I think that's 2026. It says OKC will receive the two most favorable of its 2026 first round picks. Houston's 2026 first round pick is protected for selections one through four. And the Clippers 2026 first round pick and Philadelphia will receive the least favorable of these. If the Houston pick falls within one through four and it's therefore not conveyed, then Houston will instead convey its 2026 second round pick to OKC. So I guess we don't have that pick regardless. And then yeah. 2027, it says OKC has the right to swap its 2027 first round pick or if conveyed to OKC. Denver's 2027 first round pick, which will be protected for selections one through five, which I'm guessing Jokic will still be there. They won't be picking one through five at that point. And yeah, so gee, we're, the point is our situation is really bleak. So let's say the Clippers were to blow it up, get whatever they could. I, I mean, how could the Clippers blow it up? You think the best way would be to re-sign Paul and Harden and then flip them all in the middle of the season and just be like, look, get the Clippers playing at like a 50-win pace and be like, you know what? We know it's not going to win. Toss them all to the side. Yeah, I, I would do that. Um, I think teams like the Knicks, um, I wouldn't be surprised if the Warriors show interest. I mean, I think right now they're uh, – I think Clay Thompson's future there is a bit shaky, so perhaps they might try to find a replacement there. And they have some attractive um, pieces as well as they do on their pick. So perhaps that might be an ideal situation if you were to try to flip a Kawhi. Um, th there's definitely options. I mean – the the one thing that's always going to be needed in the NBA are wings, versatile wings that can play on both sides of the floor. Um, you know, even though Kawhi and PG aren't necessarily the defenders they were in their, you know, their twenties, they're still very much so valuable defenders, um, you know, within the right system. So I, I think that those are some options that you could possibly look into um, as the season comes along. I think the question is, is how many assets you can get for them at this point. Um, I think there was a couple of reports or rumors rather um, of the Knicks trying to get Paul George last summer. And I think there was a deal on the line where they were, I think the Clippers asked for three picks and it was declined. So, I mean, that's kind of the barometer we're kind of going off of, of you know, what you can possibly get back for Paul George, maybe two, two picks, maybe a couple of seconds. That would probably be the most you'll probably get for them. And, I don't think Kawhi is really going to garner much more than that, maybe three picks from him. Uh, I think the question is, is will the picks you get back in return be um, good enough so that you can utilize them to um, build for the future? Or will they be essentially late round? You know, first right. round? And, and how problematic do you think it would be if they just let Harden and Paul George walk and then trade a Kawhi? You think that's just putting ourselves in a, in a really rough situation? Yeah, that's, that's setting us up for uh, – a rough five years for <laughs> from yeah. being honest. If we play if we're awful next year, then OKC is gonna get the pick anyway. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think another route, another thing we can talk about too is the Clippers can be real petty and just say we're gonna be a second apron team. Um, I think one thing we're also forgetting is that uh if you're a second apron team for two out of the four years, your pick essentially becomes the 30th pick in the draft. It literally goes to the back end of the draft. So sure the OKC Thunder might own. Um, these picks up until I believe 2026, 2027. But if the Clippers were to stand pat and remain a second apron team, those picks would essentially go to the back of the draft. And, you know, it wouldn't really 
be much of what they're getting from them, essentially. Oh, there we go. Great discussion. So many avenues explored. Let us know what you feel is the best avenue for the Clippers. Drift, let people know where they can find you, man. It was a good talk. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. Um, my handle is Drift to the Music. Uh, you can find me in the spaces. You can find me um, talking about the um, sports. I talk about all the NBA teams. I talk about the Clippers primarily. Um, and if you just want to chop it about about basketball, I'm always here to you know hear different perspectives. There we go. Appreciate you, everybody. Let us know what you think. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod and subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, where I go live after every single night of playoff games. And Locked On Clippers is free and available for all things Clippers five days a week throughout the offseason. We will still be getting you covered on your L.A. Clippers, despite the tough situation that the franchise is in now and might be even for a couple of years. We will be here together, win or lose, supporting the boys. The age-old proverb continues. Go Clippers.